Hey everybody, it's Will. We're back with another episode, episode 60 tonight of Creators Outlet with our special guests, David and Clay from a Kickstarter project they have going on that will be going on for one more week, nine more days going on on this. But before we get into everything, we want to give a big shout out to our sponsor, SpinWiz Comics at SpinWizComics.com. They are a webcomic and indie comic discovery platform. You can download the app completely free on both Android and iOS. And as long as you're signed into the app, you will get credit for every page of comics you read. You will get one entry into their monthly, quarterly, and annual giveaways. Check them out for yourself, SpinWiz Comics at SpinWizComics.com. And here's just a quick look of what it could look like on your smart device. And speaking of creator-owned comics, here we are. So how are you guys doing today? Doing good. Glad yeah, doing great. Yeah. Thanks for having us. And the campaign's going well. It's, it's uh, fully funded, and you're just poking your way through stretch goals now with nine more days to go. We are slaying stretch goals. We're uh, what do we have, Dave? We got we knocked down two. We've we've slaughtered two, right. and uh, we're, well, we're coming on up our third. on uh, yeah. The third one's at nineteen six six six, and uh, there'll be an eight by ten of Shelley Post Stoker, uh, the uh, the hostess of the film festival yeah. at Nightmare Theater. Yeah, that's the next twenty twenty six six six. Oh, sorry, twenty six six six. Yeah, we uh, we we made it a little more even there. We stretched it. We well, stretched I'm, our stretch goal. We stretched the stretch goal. You got to push it out a little bit when it's going so fast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. But last week, about nine, uh, nine more days to go. You, That's right. You had, you had me nervous. I thought it was going to be an eight by six of you. No, no one wants that. <laughs> no we we that. saved that for the eleven by seventeen. Oh, okay. And he's just yeah, he's just wearing the mankini. So it's actually it's actually sort of like the Vampirella outfit. Right. Except um, I'm wearing it. Yeah. yeah. That's 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 we're gonna start losing we're gonna start losing pledges with that one. It's the it's scariest your, part of our book. It's yeah. your Borat pose. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, we're uh, we're we're closing in on the, the you know probably one of the final stretch goals, but uh, it's gone really well so far. So you yeah you're you're nicely past that four hundred and thirty backers with nine more days to go. Yeah. That's right. We're we're shooting for six six six, but if we if we beat it. That's fine. We'll take that too. You're right. Yeah. We're more than happy to go buy it, but we, you know. And why don't you guys tell us how uh, this whole anthology project came along? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll go for it. Well, um, uh, I'll tell you the long version because why not? Um, the long version is that uh, many many years ago, uh, when I was a young actor in New York, um, in my early twenties. Uh, I was working on on the set of a show called As the World Turns, so one of the, one of the soap operas that shot New York. And um, one of the leads pulled me aside after we were shooting a scene, and she said, "Hey, listen, my my husband is out in Los Angeles. He's trying to cast a horror movie that he wrote and uh, and and is directing, is co-directing. And um, uh, they're having a little trouble finding the lead, and and I think you'd be perfect for it. Can you put yourself on tape?" So, um, so I went to the, the production offices and put myself on tape. My wife actually worked there at the time. So she, uh, she recorded me and all the suits thought she was being attacked by a raving maniac. And I booked the role. I went out to Los Angeles. Uh, I, I met the, uh, the lady's husband, uh, Keith Kaloris, and his co-director and co-writer, uh, Mr. David Schrader. And uh, we worked together on that horror film called Bloodline, which was uh, released by Lionsgate. And, um, and yeah, so we, so we met on the set of a horror film and then, um, I did another horror film for Lionsgate, uh, called the shadow walkers and then, uh, went into a career in voiceover, uh, animation voiceover. And, um, and Dave and I both wound up working in comics so many years later, me with, with fried comics and, uh, Dave with baby badass. And we just kind of reconnected and, and rekindled that friendship and decided let's do a project together. And, and we knew so many fantastic creators. We knew we wanted to do an anthology and we thought, let's go back to our roots. Let's, we, we met doing, doing a horror thing. Let's, uh, let's do another horror thing. 
And um, and so that was the birth of, of Nightmare Theater. Yeah, it's Bloodline Comics is the name of the, the company. So we just named it right after the, uh, the film. That's right. And it's a great it's a great looking cover too. Oh, it's fantastic! Yeah, that's uh, that's an artist named Kyle Roberts. Um, he uh, he has a company called From Beyond Comics. Uh, he and I are actually writing a book together right now called Electric Youth that was recently featured in the L.A. Times. Um, but he's also uh, he's not just a great writer; he's a fantastic artist. And this is his uh, this is his cover here, featuring uh, sh there's Shelley Post Stoker we were telling you about before. And uh, the welder and Erie, Erie Aaron. Aaron. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a lot of great covers on this uh, on this um, campaign. So Kyle's is the original. Um, Sora Sung did a, a cover called Box Office Death, which is uh, really beautiful. Um, Liad Goldberg did an oil painting for us that actually sold. It was one of the higher tiers um, called the Unholy Trinity. And then uh, Mexifunk. Uh, Orlando Arocina is this amazing vector artist. He's an award-winning, Clio award-winning vector artist. And he did this cover for us uh, that's somewhat like The Bride of Frankenstein. It's like a retro movie poster cover. And that's that's oh, what we cool. use for the hard cover too. It's really, really nice. And it's a 225 plus page plus. trade paperback. Yeah, plus is the, the operative word there. Plus, that's right. It's gonna be. I think it's gonna be more than that. It's this book is like a Frankenstein's monster. It just keeps. Uh, it keeps getting, getting bigger, bigger and bigger. Just more right. and more dangerous. Yeah, right. But that's good. You get a you get a lot of bang for your buck with this book. Oh yeah, I'm like looking at the uh, the over 35, which maybe by the end might be 65 uh, creators involved. <laughs> Uh, sure. I see. I see our friend David Pepos on there from Spencer yep. and Locke in the That's Oz. Right. Yep. Uh, yep. Sean from Puppet Master and Let's All Die. Dave DeWanch, Prom of the Dead. Um, yeah, Newton Lillevoix, who does Crescent City Monsters. Which, if you haven't seen that book, uh, it's gorgeous. It's, it's amazing. Great. Fantastic uh, art too. The Charlie Stickney. <laughs> Charlie Stickney. Yeah, he's he's done a few things and uh, just, just a few. Man. Man. Yeah. Uh, Richard Fairgray, who's awesome, who, who does uh, Black Sand Beach and Blastosaurus. Uh, but he did this amazing story. I describe it as like a David Sedaris horror uh, story. So it's 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 a it's a it's a good variation of um, creators and stories. I think that's that's what we we're really proud of is that like it's not a repeat of the same type of theme. It's it's uh, you know explores all the different subgenres of horror. Yeah, it's a real eclectic mix, and there's some there's really something for everybody. Like if you if you like vampire stories, we got a vampire story. If you like, you know, werewolves, we got a werewolf, but we've also got psycho killers and slashers and Lovecraftian monsters and I mean you 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 name it, we've got it. It's there. And like we were talking in the pre-show, uh our friend uh David Avaloni from uh Elvira Mistress of the Dark is gonna be involved in this as well. Right. Yeah, Beautiful he's got a story part. called German Chocolate, which is based on uh, it's sort of it, it's a tale that his father told him uh, when he was a kid. He would um, his dad. I don't know if you know uh, his dad, Michael Avalone, was a uh, was a pulp writer. And uh, when his dad came back from the war, uh, World War II, he uh, he would tell tales like the old uh, um, you know, Grimm's Grimm fairy tales, except mm -hmm. he would, he would transplant them to, you know, make them like war stories. So, um, so <laughs> what David has done here is he's taken one of those stories that his dad told him as a kid and turned it into a, a dark grim fairy tale set during the war called German yeah. chocolate. It's really fantastic. Yeah. Beautiful art, Sylvia uh, Califano. Uh, mm -hmm. And she does Star Trek for, is it IDW, Clay? Yeah. Um, yep. But beautiful artwork. Like uh, there's just there's just great uh, artwork throughout this whole thing. And this, this, this exclusive movie poster for the hardcover yeah. is- It's not nice, gorgeous. <laughs> it's not too shabby. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty darn good. Yeah, no, we're really lucky. Um, Orlando's done a few covers for me. He did one for Baby Badass. It still isn't out yet because volume two is coming out next year. Um, and he did one for a book I did with Peter Marietta called Henchman that was just dynamite too. So I'll, I'll use him as long as he's willing to, uh, to do covers for us because they're, they're fantastic. But this one was, uh, this one was dynamite. 
Yeah, so yeah. That, that one you can get, that's actually the hardcover, and then we are also releasing it as a movie poster. So that it, that is actually the 11 by 17. Uh, forget what I said about Dave and a mankini. Yeah, it's, this, is, this is much better. <laughs> this is much better, way better. Scratch that idea, yeah. Well, what happens is you buy the poster and David comes to your door in a mankini to deliver. That's right, I'll Correct. deliver it. Yes, it's, uh, <laughs> well, maybe it's a COVID special. I'll do it through Zoom. I'm not gonna actually show up at your door, but. Oh, you'll get that. You'll get that. <laughs> and I tell this story all the time. Uh, one of my first guests was uh, Graham Nolan, co-creator of Bane for DC Comics. Oh, yeah. And when he was launching his newest Kickstarter, uh, the Chinoo, he somehow changed the pledge without a reward $10 tier on Kickstarter to buy Graham a beer. <laughs> nice. That probably, that probably worked. It, it was, did. It and ever, ever since I've been trying to launch a Kickstarter for, you know, buy Will a beer, but there's nothing else included. Just buy me a beer. Ne well, next one we'll get one on there for you like that. It hasn't worked. But yeah, <laughs> well, that 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 poster would uh would look really good next to uh my horror my my horror. Uh, Hammer horror figures that are coming in in a couple. Oh, of cool! Oh, yeah, very cool. Well, we have a we have a story uh, by Christian Horn, who is my co-creator of Baby Badass. That it's called uh, Frankenstein's Frankenstein's Vampire. Frankenstein's Vampire, and it is very much like the Hammer horror uh, mixed in with a little the EC. It has that feel to it. So oh. again, there's something for everybody in this book. Oh, and there's the unholy trinity. Yeah. Yeah, Liad's great, he, and that 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 like I said, that was a full oil painting that someone got, some lucky, some lucky collector got, some lucky backer. They jumped <laughs> on that right away. Yeah, they did. That they, they, they really did. That went fast. That went very fast. Yeah, and we're and so all of these, uh, Dave likes to call them our terrifying tropes: um, the welder, Shelley Post Stoker, and uh, Eerie Aaron. And we're all we're fleshing them out with some origin stories inside the book too that are going to be drawn by Mick Byers. Oh, uh, who's working on the story with Charlie Stickney as well. Yeah, that's almost like a bonus because that wasn't something necessarily talked about, but um, it was great for the framework of the book to have it as a film festival. So sections of the book can kind of be like, if you were at a film festival, you would be seeing certain types of movies this night and that night. And um, we were able to get the stories together in that way. And so having these characters and having them have their own origin stories and an intro story was pretty cool as a framing device. And of course, I, I like this image, and I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> and that's that's Sora Sung, who she has a Kickstarter right now called uh, I think it's Saints and Sinners, and that's her first art book, and she is fantastic. And so, yeah, she's selling that original art as part of the campaign. that's right, that part of her campaign. Cool, and and you you got to love the zombie hand coming up through the spilled <laughs> pop, yeah. right? Right. Yeah, and that's that's the that's the thing. This book was basically like if you loved horror movies and you love horror comics, we really wanted it to be. Uh, for those for those fans, so you know uh, every subgenre is explored, um, and and there's people that have great horror backgrounds that have done stories for us, but there's other people that they haven't done horror before, but they love horror, and they just happen to be really good creators, good writers, and uh, maybe they gave it like a fresh perspective on stuff. And David Pepos is an example of that. Like his story was, you know, something that was a little different and something I hadn't quite seen before. And he's very good at doing those mashups. And that's kind of what he did with his story. And this yeah. that we're looking at here is James Powell. He does a book called House of Fear for Dark Horse. Mm -hmm. And it's um, it's usually geared towards kids, but he he amped it up a little bit for us, for Nightmare yeah. Theater. He, and, yeah, he, he went past PG-13 probably a little bit. <laughs> he was like, here's all the stuff I want to put into that kid's book, but can't. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, so that's a story called Hair Today, Gone Tomorrow, and it's uh, art by Jethro Morales. It's the uh, it's the same team from House of Fear. Yeah, just uh, oh, just nice. turning it up to eleven. Yeah, yeah. We were lucky to get a lot of the creators that we that we got because you know Clay knows some. He brought some in. I know some. I brought some in. And um, you know what we wanted to do first as editors is see what kind of stories they wanted to tell. So we would get the. The, you know, the elevator pitch as it was, you know, and if something was too similar to something else, like, well, hey, maybe try this, because a lot of them had like two or three ideas. And uh, going that route was great, because then you just started to formulate this book that 
was you know chock full of these great stories, but there was no overlap. And like Clay like has said, it's it's all killer, no filler. No so filler, baby. It's uh you know a lot of anthologies can sometimes be ah, hit or miss, you know, but we're pretty proud that everyone stepped up and delivered, you know, a great story with great art. And um, I think everyone's going to be really pleased with this book. Yeah. And this is, this is David Pepos's right yeah. here. Die, die, danger, Ronin. Yeah, that's right. Art by Erica Durso. And it's yeah. uh it's like super Sentai versus the walking dead. What's not to like about that. What's not to <laughs> like about that. Right. Oh, and we have a story in it too. Well, uh, me and Clay wrote a, um, a story called Nightmare with a K, and it's basically like a late '80s kind of slasher movie. These kids uh, break into this uh, amusement park where there's a ride that's been shut down, and they get on it, and uh, of course, bad things happen. But uh, that that was a fun one to do. Yeah. So we, we're, we, we're not, yeah we're not only editors, we are also contributors. We do for dark rides what Friday the Thirteenth did for campgrounds. Right. I think you're scrolling past Richard Fairgray's uh, story there. So R Richard is just very unique and uh, interesting. And, and like this was just, that was just a terrifying, creepy, but funny tale that he told. Colonel's um, all the way down. <laughs> Colonel's yes. all the way down. Uh, you'll have to read it to see it and you'll have to read it to believe it. And you'll never uh, forget it, I promise. And, and there's our story, Nightmare. There's Nightmare. We have a page there. So very kind of, you know, playing with those late 80s Nightmare on Elm Street type of vibes. And yeah, I love, I love the art you guys have on this story too. Yeah, we got lucky as a guy named Ismail uh, Canales and he was really, really good. And again, I'm sorry, we just lucked out because sometimes you don't know what you're going to get when you go in with an artist and uh, he just knocked it out. Of the he, park. he knocked it out of the park. And, and I always point this out, but I have to. Uh, he, he really also has that sort of George Perez flavor to his art a little bit. Yeah, and so that's perfect for this for the setting because it is that late eighties kind of setting. So it's yeah. perfect for it. It, it is a it is a horrifying tale. Uh, some of the things that happen in it are pretty uh, pretty bloody and pretty uh, uh, scream inducing. Put yeah. it that way. Well, you've only got the first page here, and yeah, yeah. I, I I'm flashing on about thirty five horror movies I've watched just in the last <laughs> month. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. That's what you want, right? Yeah. Reminds me of my childhood filled with nothing but bad decisions. That's right. But <laughs> That's right. but I, I do guarantee there will be some surprises in that story, some things you won't be able to uh, get, you won't be able to unsee once you've seen right. it. Right. This is Charlie Stickney's, I think you're going by here, yeah. and, and Mick Byers. And I think Clay describes it kind of as a David Fincher esque yeah. Kind of tale. Yeah, yeah, a little PI tale. Going to pieces. Yeah, and then we got uh, Dave Dewanch with a, a tale so twisty we can't even tell you the title, um, but it's it's a you know it's it, it kind of sets up um, a horror tale that's something you think you might have seen, but then kind of turns it on its head a little bit. It's pretty cool. It, it yeah. must be good. One of the word balloons has a sensor in it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> a little of that too. It runs the gamut, and there's uh, David Avalone. Yeah, yeah there's German dirt. chocolate. German chocolate. Yeah. The seemingly familiar gingerbread house in the middle of a World War II scene. That's right. That's right. What's not to love about this already? <laughs> I, as soon as soon as I saw some of the 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 drawings that he showed us initially, I was like, "Wow, I can't wait to read this and see this." The kill boat. The yeah. kill boat. Nicole D'Andrea. Uh, I, I, I love the title. Originally, I think, what was it called? The Love to Kill Boat? The, lo the Love to Kill Boat. Yeah. <laughs> the Love to Kill Boat. I think she shortened it to Kill Boat. But I, I still, I'm still, i still partial to the Love to Kill Boat. But um, yeah, that's a very much like a, I, I don't know, I want to say like a hostile, like hostile, like something like that type of horror, mm -hmm. you know, that can be pretty gruesome and slasher, slasher centric. But it was good. Yeah, and that's uh, Michaela DeSacco on that just from that one mini panel i, I never want to go on a cruise again <laughs> <laughs> you, you it's nice job. <laughs> i think we say it's uh it's it's <laughs> exciting and cruel <laughs> that was that was my bit um <laughs> that's, that's, very, 
Gary Mayo, yeah, uh, who did Wicked Righteous, and um, yeah, that that's called um, Faux fo- fo- News. Yeah. <laughs> Faux fo- News. Yeah, I think F F what is it? F E U X on purpose. It wasn't the uh, the other way around. I, I wasn't reading it because I didn't want, want to mistakenly say, "Oh, look what's happened to Fox News." <laughs> right, <laughs> but it, it's it's a horrifying tale as well. And it, it just, as you can see from that panel, that's yeah. yeah the that's first horrific. glimpse of this panel, it just says, "Flying a kite going wrong." Spoiler alert. <laughs> Sean Gaboran, who does Black Betty, does Puppet Master. Oh, I uh, love uh, Black Betty. Black Betty yeah. is great, great. Sean is a great guy. And that's the thing, too. Like, you know, we we wanted to, t- to bring in people that we had met um, and, and you know, were friendly with. They were good people, but they were good creators. And, you know, we asked as many of them as we could. And almost all of them said yes. So that's why you got such a big book. But, um we're really happy with it. Like just the fact that they agreed to do it. And then I think once people were sending things in and seeing what the art looked like, I think they realized, well, I better up my game and, 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 you know, uh, step up and, and deliver something really good too. So it wasn't like it was competition, but I think everyone knew that they were putting their best foot forward. And, you know, this is not something that I think we would do every year or every, every couple months. It's like a once in a, you know, every couple of years thing. So like, let's, let's give it our, our best shot with this thing. And we want, that's why we wanted to make the book as big as possible. What are we holding it back for? You know, there's some, uh, that's Gian Carlo City Bernal. Monsters. Yeah. Yeah. Giancarlo Car- Bernal, the, the artist is so fantastic. All of the Crescent City monster books are just black and white, but you, it's like black and white. Like you've never seen it. Like the, the scales that are used in it are just phenomenal. Like you just get lost in the artwork with his stuff. Yeah, it's so good. And um, and so for this, Newton Lillevois, who uh, who writes Crescent City Monsters, he did a prose story, which I thought was super cool. Uh, he he wrote the prose story and then uh, Gian illustrated it. And I, I feel like every good anthology needs that prose story, that illustrated prose story in there. Oh, yeah. And it's a it's a continuation or um, an extension of his the universe or Crescent City Monsters. So it's like a companion story. Um, you don't need to have you don't need to know Crescent City Monsters, but I think you'd want to after checking it out. But if you are already a fan of Crescent City Monsters, <laughs> Here's you have more. to get this book because it's, there's a bonus story that's not told anywhere. Else. That's right. That's you right. Can't get it anywhere else? So, uh, very pleased that they came along for this too. ML ML Miller, who did Grave Trancers and Pirouette. Um, I think that's his his artist too for Pirouette. Uh, Carlos opening, Granda. Yeah, opening night is a really cool story with a with a surprise, um, and it kind of kind of linked in and worked well with Nightmare Theater with the theme, as you can see. We we got really lucky with this book. I think, as David was saying before, stories would come in, and while we while we did approve things at the pitch stage. Uh, we still we still just felt so lucky as we were seeing stories come in that that were so varied and and you know explored such different territory. But then we had these happy accidents like this story that that really um, that really kind of worked into our framing device so well that uh, this might actually close out the book. It's yeah. uh, it's a really great it's a really great tale. Yeah, it's called Opening Night, and it'll probably be our last story, which is kind of cool. Opening night, tonight's yeah. closing feature. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Cl- closed forever. Uh, <laughs> on the win. Uh, yep. And Mike Corpy. Yep. A night at the vet. Uh, night at the vet. Very cool stuff. Don's a great guy. Do you know Don? Uh, not yet. Yeah, you should have him on. He did Pablo the Gorilla, but he's a great artist and just a great guy. Caden Phoenix, who did... Um, What's their story is uh, concert right? grand. No, yeah. Concert concert grand. It's, it's very dark, but uh, very evocative and um, moody. I, I love the art in this. Yeah. yeah just, just that one panel, like leads you to like, you know, com- like, you know, adult right. Scooby-Doo mis- mystery. <laughs> right. and, it, and it is truly horrifying too. When you get towards the end, you're like, wow, it's, it's that, dark. That, that it, it's really dark. It got, it got real dark right at the end. 
Um, you, you might not get it from that picture, but that is a very dark story. Yeah. And then this here is Jeff Leeds um, with Passage. Great story. Love the art in this. It almost reminded me a little bit of like a, um, a little bit of like a, a adult Calvin and Hobbes kind of kind of look to it. I thought. Yeah, but, I can uh, see that. Yeah, but uh, also great. Everything's oh, minus, great. But... Minus the kid eating somebody's yeah. internal organs. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> oh, breakfast kidney. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a another. You know, these are all. These are all terrifying tales, you, you know. Let's not uh, let's not sugarcoat it. But um, but but yeah, there's some good some good thematic stuff in here too. And I'll I'll probably talk about this later. But uh, but this story passage um, thematically is linked to another story in the book, and, and and that's another thing. There are certain just thematically themes just sort of linked up. But again, we we didn't cover the same ground. You know, it was a different type of terror. It was a different type of tale. It was a different type of subgenre. But it, but it sort of you know these same themes kept kind of coming up. And I think that's a really cool thing about this book. Yeah. The Cricket Man. Yeah, this is by a writer named Andrew Gildy, and uh and donna black is the artist on this um dc hopkins did the letters and um and this is sort of one of those uh one of those stories about uh, an urban legend um you know we we've all we've all sort of heard those uh those horror tales of of the kids around the campfire talking right. about the urban legend mm -hmm. uh is it real is it not real well you should definitely fear the cricket man that's all i'll say <laughs> Yeah, that definitely was a campfire tale. Russell Nolte uh, and Matthew Childers, right? Childers? Yep. Yep. Childers, Childers I think. I, 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 you know what? I've never actually uh, heard it pronounced. I I, I always I, said Childers. Matthew, if you're out there listening and we're slaughtering your name, I'm apologies. <laughs> but but great art. Uh, and I think I think Russell was going for like, you know, the, those 90s like craft type of things. And so it definitely had that feel to it. And uh, did a great job uh, bringing that out. Yeah, nice little occult tale. And there's the Christian horn. Yeah, Frankenstein's uh, vampire. Frankenstein vampire, which definitely had, was the, like the hammer horror. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's he's a big fan of that stuff, so he wanted to. He had that idea a long time ago. He's like, that's the one I want to do. I love the title too, Frankenstein's vampire. Yeah, it's great. A uh, Christy Shin, who told a very, very personal tale. She had gone through some serious like health issues and then came out the other side. And so it's like a, it's a dark, but um, you know, ultimately um, there's a, there was a good end. But this is a, this is a highly personal thing that she came up with. Yeah, yeah. which, which I, is I know, cool. I know Christy. Yeah, Christy's great. Um, it, it's it's cool because you know there's contrast, right? It's not just. It's it's not just kill 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 right. kill you know. Um, well, there's a sec there's a section that's kind of like um, sh short subjects, odds and ends, and and you know oddities and things like that. And because some of the pieces are one page, like uh, Eddie D'Angelini has a collector's that's like a psycho you know one page panel comic, and Christie's is a short. So some of the shorts are kind of like grouped together, like it would be in a film festival. So you know in that way, like if you know you're looking for late night creature features or something, you can go to a section of the book and kind of get what you're looking for. You know, it's not, it's not so uh, wildly jumping around from one story to the next as some anthologies do when you're reading, you know, one story after the other, there's a, you know, a framework and a, a theme that kind of like is in play here. And that was Dave's brilliant brainstorm. I <laughs> yes. have to give him credit brilliant. for that. So brilliant. <laughs> well, but, but, you know, it, it does organize the book in a way that, that, like you said, it, it makes things, it just kind of pulls things together a little bit more and, and makes it feel a little more cohesive. And I think that's what good anthologies do. So um, I was very excited when you, when you came up with that idea. Thank so you. there's actually a, a method to your uh, editorial madness. That's right. <laughs> there must've been. And I mean, we've been thinking about the book for a while. It was probably, it was probably over a year. Total. Yeah. Uh, just like kind of thinking about it and doing the outreach, you know, uh, getting the stories in the ideas first, then the stories, then, you know, setting the deadlines. And that's, you know, as an editor, that's the thing you have to do is make sure you set a deadline. Just so everyone knows out there with the Kickstarter, like the book is pretty much done. I think we are just doing some of the interstitials, getting some things colored and 
uh, finalizing a few things, but um, you didn't want to be waiting on any story and you wanted to get it out and, and, and print it as soon as possible and get it in everyone's hands. Yeah, and this is uh, Phil C. Butehorn and Don Cardenas. Uh, and this is this is a late night creature feature, as as Dave said. Uh, Dinner in Technicolor. With Dinner right. with Blobby. Dinner with Blobby. <laughs> which is, which That's is a right. Great title. And this this very much uh, uh, links up with Passage. This is what I was talking about. This story uh, thematically, I think, covers some of the same uh, some of the same ground and some of the same fears that maybe parents have. But at the same time, like they're just they're two completely different stories. And I, I don't think you would necessarily read them and think, oh, uh, thematically this is the same. But if you really sit down and think about it, um, it, it it covers the that same primal fear. Uh, in very different ways. So this very much we wanted to to um, replicate that look and feel of like a 1950s creature feature. And I just love that it says Technicolor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the color is great on that too. It, it, it did uh, evoke that feeling. Yeah, Don did a great job. Yeah, like even you can see it like in the grass behind Blobby. It's totally different than the than the trees in the background. Yeah, it's it's got you know it's got feel to it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And Carla Nappi did the hotel. Is it just simply called the hotel play? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A ghost story. So a very you know like like that old movie Ghost Story, which I love. That starred John Houseman, and I'm trying to think who else, but uh, Roddy McDowell. Maybe it was. It's a it's a great old movie, probably from like the early '80s, but it was set in the '40s or. 30s or 40s, but it definitely has like a feel like that, just kind of like an, a traditional old fashioned ghost story. Is that the one based on the, is it the Peter Straub book? Yes, yes, yeah. Peter Straub's ghost story, which I'm sure you've read, right, Clay? I, I actually have not. It's on okay. It's on my list. I have not Clay, read it. Yeah. Clay's infamous, well, for reading, uh, reading a lot of these things. Like he read Psycho, he read uh, Block Psycho before he saw the movie. Like, I like to read the books. He reads oh, the books first. I, I, have, I have a friend like that. I'm just the opposite. Like I, I'm one of the uh, buy the book with intentions of reading, and then see the movie, and never and watch the movie and never touch the book. Hey, it's on your shelf. It counts. If the book's you on know, your shelf, it counts. I, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big supporter of physical media. Right. You know? So, I I love this panel too when they when they snap off the old fashioned picture and the. Uh, the shimmering uh, and the ghost, ghost appear. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's really cool. And that artist, I, I don't know how to say the name. Is it Onemone? Is that how you'd say that? Sure, I'll go with that. You, that's you, my best guess. You got it, Clay. All if right. Not, please blame Clay. It's all it's all my bad. But yeah, she uh, cool. she did a great job on on this as well as you can tell. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's just a creepy little story. Um, so I, I have not seen ghost story. I've not read ghost story, so I can't, I can't compare it to that, but, um, but uh, you know, the shining, can we compare it to the shining? I don't know. That's another sure. haunted hotel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. Well, that's again, that falls under the, you know, the idea of the cinematic, uh, horror that we were looking for is wasn't specific to any movie, but to the subgenres. you know, what we wanted it to feel like, you know, you are watching a, a film or a horror film that, you know, uh, you would recognize what genre you're in when you're seeing it. Stephen Prince, who does Monster Matador, which is not a horror book, but ha does have monsters and scary monsters. And uh, and Fabio Alves, who, who uh, does the art for Monster Matador. Right. Mm -hmm. also, As, does, uh, also does work with Rylan Grant, a lot of yeah. stuff with Rylan Grant. He he did the who, jump who, as well, who, right? Who doesn't work with Rylan? <laughs> <laughs> Rylan works. Rylan, David, those guys work. Yeah, I busted his chops because one of his one of his story things was uh, like on the set of one of the one of his productions. Yeah, and, and for once he didn't have a beanie on. I go, wow, is that you without a hat? <laughs> Hardly ever see it, right? Yeah, I know. It's like it's it's like non-existent. It's his M.O. Usually, yeah. How did you recognize him without Carl Weathers on his arm? <laughs> oh, it's it's that Rylan Grant on it. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah, Rylan was supposed to be in the book. He was just one of those guys that, like, he was so busy. He's like, I'm going to get to it. And, like, 
he, he couldn't make the deadline, but he had, you know, he had other stuff going on. Peacekeepers is well, Peacekeepers. Out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which I'm really looking forward to. It looks fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah. I just, I just had him on for that a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. cool. Very cool. Cool looking crime book. And uh, of course, you know, the, the hockey mask uh, in right. that image makes me think of Jason. Right. And uh, I, cause we were, we were going over it and I was, you know, I was scrolling down, down his uh, Kickstarter, like we're doing now for you guys. And, Came came across a cover that I was like, oh my god, that's like the best cover for any of your books I've ever seen. It was the Fargo cover. He's oh, the variant yeah. cover he, master. He loves oh, yeah. doing those uh, retro variants. Yep, yep. I do a few, but he puts me to shame with that. Like uh, how much he's, uh, how far back he goes with some of those things. Mm -hmm. I was enjoying the weekend at Bernie's cover. I think for is it Aberrant that. Yeah, that one just came out. Yeah, was it was it Aberrant? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Ab Aberrant uh, got the uh, weekend at Bernie's cover, All right? And Dan Jacks got the Demon in a Bottle from Iron Man One Twenty Nine cover, All right? Right. Which I bought that cover last year. Uh, I, I got that Iron Man. Nice. I got I got the Iron Man, and then I found one from an older volume of Venom of the same thing but it's actually looking from the opposite it's not the reflection it's just looking from the opposite side of eddie brock wasted uh -huh. up waste you know just on his last string with the glass and the bottle in front of him oh cool this one is kill your darlings kill by your darling. Alex Green and anna go ahead clay uh weiss check is that how you'd say that weiss check that's right and it's very like a, a, a Stephen King kind of uh, kind of tale here. Yeah, it's it's su uh, again super creepy. Uh, dev I think a Stephen King type tale is definitely a great description. If you like Stephen King, I think you will you will like this. Some familiar elements, and uh, yeah, just a really creepy tale. That that final page is going to knock you out, uh, Anna killed it on the art forgive the pun but uh she did a great job yeah and that's and alex is not somebody that i knew actually uh andrew gildy recommended him uh, and i'm glad he did right this is S sebastian Kadlasek, and he did uh he did kinsey kinsey he wrote kinsey which uh our friends at um um <laughs> i'm blanking out uh, help me out, Clay. Barbara and Bryant from Oh yeah, Fanbase Press. Fanbase Press. I don't know why I was thinking of uh, some other company. Fanbase Press. Yeah, did Kinsey, and it's like an award-winning book. It's fantastic. It's you know a girl that's like on her quinceanera, uh, understands that she has superpowers, but they only last a year. And um, we just I just asked him because he'd done Penguins versus Possums, which was a cool book. And Kinsey was like, Hey, do you want to be in this book? And he came up with a great story. So yeah, this is uh. That's Sebastian's. And then Tony Fabro, who does three panel crimes. Do you know three panel crimes, Will? Oh, yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So he did an extended three panel crime. So it's like a. It's like an 18 a, panel crime. Is it 18? Is it two pages? Is it's it two? two it's two pages? pages. Yeah. Yeah. Two I think pages. it's two, two pages, wow. nine panels two each. Crime. Yeah, so he did yeah. an expanded three panels crying for this. So, like, there's some unique things in this book that you can't get anywhere else, you know. So, uh, and it's it's a dark and beautiful, beautifully drawn uh, story too. But it's dark. And and That's yeah, like and a lot of our... what's cool about it is that it's like it's totally you know no no dialogue, right? Like that's his thing, right? Um, there's absolutely no dialogue and it, uh, so you, you, you're really an active participant in putting together this story and figuring out what happened. It's very cool. Right. Yeah. Uh, Peter Murrieta, Carlos Trigo, uh, did a head of Joaquin clay did the lettering for this one. And it's a, as cool you can story. tell, the lettering is great. <laughs> yeah. Lettering is not in that panel, but, uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a cool story, but the, the, the head of Joaquin Murrieta. Uh, uh, Mexican revolutionary uh, bandito. Um, now, is is there any relation? No. Well, I, actually, I think I think Peter has like a distant a distant um, connection. I think so. Okay, I'm pretty sure. Um, but it's a cool, cool story where like this this guy, you know, he's got the head in a uh, like a museum of oddities, things like that, 
and um, in San Francisco right before the great earthquake. And it's very much like a telltale heart, uh, EC comics kind of thing. In fact, the, the story actually has a very uh, strong EC comics feel to it from the coloring to the lettering uh, and the overall look of it. Yeah, but the, I tried, tried really hard to match the look of those old EC books. Yeah, oh, great. It, it's, it's cool. Also dark. <laughs> Andre Salazar, yeah, father and son outing. Yeah. Which which sounds harmless, but <laughs> I'm just going to warn you it's not. It is not. <laughs> it, is, it is crazy. But yeah, very cool. And and Andres does uh he's he does the coloring for a book that's coming out with me and and uh Tony uh, Donnelly called Cannibals on Mars and 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 Andres has this beautiful watercolor coloring that he does it's it's actual watercoloring it's not digital like he does it on the page with watercolors and then and then scans it after oh wow so it's got a unique look with his stuff yeah i, I wouldn't think this was harmless with the two big bold <laughs> slice, 66 and words of slice and run on the page <laughs> sometimes you gotta slice and run that's right you know <laughs> jessica maison this and is a Mark, story called Keeper. Is it Mark yeah. Mactal? Mark Mark, Mark, Mark Mactal. Mactal. Yeah. See, Keeper. we're we're having to say these names for the first time. Uh, it's too. There's so many people. That's the problem. We we read them and we we interact with them online, but we don't actually <laughs> you, ever have to say their names. Your head, you're just transposing them back into digital media. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not as much as actually having to say the thing. That's, That's right. right. Was, this is a lot to put together. Let me tell you. <laughs> which is which is why we're letting Clay say all the names. That's right. He's much better than I am. Not true. Not true. Then uh, uh, Bryant Dillon. Here's Bryant from Fanbase Fan Press. Press. Yeah, it has a really uh, dark story called Buried, and um, yeah, I think this is the last one that's on the that's page featured there. here. Yeah. Pat Shan is almost done, but Pat Shan, if you know him, has a story coming out as well. In this, and wow. the who's that creepy guy? <laughs> oh, David, <laughs> that's me. Sorry, didn't mean to scare you guys. Yeah, yeah. and uh, don't, don't forget some of these others. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul, and Reina from Black Mass have yeah. a cool little story. That's um, what? Very what different. do you call? It? Is it fumetti? Is that the Italian, uh, the Italian word for the the comics done with photos? Like it's like a photo realist. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but it's they do they do live horror, um, which is like like high end, almost like escape room type stuff. And and you know people pay a lot of money to have these kind of events, these experiences. So this is the first time that Paul and Reina have um, done something in a different medium. But they brought what they do in reality to uh, to to a comic book form. So again, just something else where we wanted to have some unique stories and unique visions uh, included in the book. Yeah, and we got we have a short from Gary Scott Beatty, who does um, who does Gods of Azern, which is kind of a, a twisted Lovecraftian kind of uh, web comic. There's a really creepy guy right There's there. There's creepy Clay. Creepy Clay sitting on my throne of terror in your '90s suede boat shoes. That's right. <laughs> you know it. I know things. Oh, and this is the tier we have with original art. Uh, Kyle Roberts. There's not a lot of original art available. There was the Leon Goldberg oil painting, and then someone did by Kyle's cover. But these are the interstitials. He did these beautiful splash pages, which uh, feature the the you know the the characters from our story. Um, and these are the only original art that's available. So this is a, this is a cool tier. And when you come to the Kickstarter link in the comments. Uh, you can click on this little banner down here, which is click the images to see which pages are still available. Which are, which are left, that's right. And then the stretch goals, we, we have a, a cool bookmark that's like a, a movie ticket, like a vintage movie ticket, clay design. It has like our logo on it. It's kind of cool. Um, and then clay, we need to put on here the, the next stretch goal, 26, that's right. 16, which is the Shelley Post Stoker 8 by 10. Ah, uh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of stuff, isn't it, Will? Just a few things. 
<laughs> right, we we like to joke that uh, this book is so big you could kill somebody with it. So, <laughs> well, the you know, the disclaimer is: please do not kill someone with this book. We do not want to be responsible for murder. Any, murder, any murder by book. With you know an anthology or like an oversized, you know, trade available in hardcover. I'm like, well, it's not just entertaining, but it's ideal for home defense. <laughs> there, there you that's go. right. That's right. If if zombies attack your home or a slasher uh, breaks through your window, right. attack them with this book. Yes. Don't don't be uh, don't go out looking for trouble, but you can stand that's your right. ground with this book. You can uh, defend your home with the book. Yes. So there's there's nine more days left on the Kickstarter. That's right. And uh, what's the timeline for fulfillment right now, barring any? major problems clay a, well let me let me look what did we say on here i've got to i've got to <laughs> look and see uh so yeah so we're estimating delivery around june of next year um you know we we're building in a little extra time hopefully it'll move a little faster than that but you know sometimes with printing um uh you can't be too sure how quickly it's going to get to you so uh we padded it out added a little extra time but um we feel we feel pretty darn confident that it's going to be here uh, by by June of 2021, if not before. Right. Yeah, well, you got to get the proofs back and go through, make sure everything's just right. And, and that's that's the thing—a a book and this okay. size. And it, and I mean, it could it could end up being close to 300 pages. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> don't don't tell me that. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, you're 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 probably right, but I don't even want to think about that yet. Uh, you're gonna give Dave nightmares. You're gonna get uh, you're gonna get a lot of book for your money, though. I'll make you feel better. It's gonna be about 250 pages, okay. and uh, that's probably yeah, you, you gotta get everything back. Then the the printer has to come, and then any of the stretch goals and packing and shipping and all that fun stuff. That's right. And that's the thing. We wanted the book to be the thing. Like, you know, I, I, I see a lot of Kickstarters sometimes and it's cool. They have a ton of things. They have t-shirts and all kinds of extras and trinkets and toys. But, you know, with this anthology, like the, the book is the star, the, the creators that, 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 that contributed are the star of this book. There's obviously we have, you know, some covers, the poster, some other things, but we didn't want to just go crazy with uh, extra side things. We wanted it to be focused on the book and putting it all into that because, you know, I think this is going to look good on people's shelves. I think they're going to um, uh, see that some of these stories are going to be expanded into other uh, spinoffs probably somewhere down the line. I know David Avaloni, I know David Pepos and others probably want to do more with their stories eventually. Um, and it's kind of cool that we can say that this always started in Nightmare Theater, you know, it, like even our story Nightmare may be expanded sometime. But you saw, it here yeah, this, you saw it here first in in Nightmare Theater anthology, and the uh, the movie poster outside of being available as a movie poster, did you guys put that in as an add on, or is that going to just be a stretch goal? Well, so so for right now, it's uh, the movie poster itself is is its own tier. Um, okay. So uh, we actually we actually chose not to do add ons at this time, like Kickstarter had just introduced that feature. Yeah. Um, and so like days before, I think we yeah. launched it to come out. Yeah. So, um, so we didn't, we didn't really get a chance to play with that, but, um, but probably somewhere on the back end, you know, you'll be able to, to maybe add some stuff to your order if you'd like. Right. And the, the movie poster, beautiful painting is for the hardcover edition. That's right. Yeah. Let me zoom back up there. I hope I don't need to gas up again before I get there. <laughs> it is jam packed with a lot of awesome horrorness. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, and the story then the stories are meaty too. You know, sometimes uh, so, yeah, I, I I think it's great that uh, a lot of anthologies have <laughs> you know different lengths of stories, but sometimes you you really just want to get in there. And so we do have a section for shorts, but many of them are are pretty meaty things between you know eight, six eight to, eight to ten pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he he. That's a that's a beautiful poster. 
And we had an actress, uh, Sarah Maliski, played Shelly Postoker. She's in our video and a couple other um, promos as well. But she really brought the character to life. She she loves horror, so she basically like went full on with the cosplay. It was great. It was yeah. just you know, well, this is perfect. I'm just gonna go play. <laughs> That's right. But this is the exclusive hardcover cover and poster, right? Yep. You fine, know, plus, fine plus vintage plus, poster. Yep. You know, so this is this is like I would just call this the awesome throwback cover for the hardcover. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, it's, so, I, I think Dave mentioned it. It's it's sort of based off of an old Bride of Frankenstein poster. And he really nailed that feel. Yeah. One of the one of the old fashioned painted lobby posters. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah. It, I would check him out on Instagram if you want to look at his work. It's Mex Mexifunk. Um, just amazing. He does like high profile stuff, commercial stuff, but also for like um, DC and for like Marvel for movies, like uh, promos and things like that. He, his stuff is fantastic. Well, this book looks great and wonderful. And wow, he just jumped out like that. That was rude. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> he, he he didn't want to. He, he's like, I, I came, I saw, I conquered. I, I said I, what I had to say. I did what I wanted to do, and I'm gone. He he does that sometimes. That uh, Dave is really tricky like that. You know that, and you know, shoddy internet from Comcast will do it to you every time. Indeed. You know what? That that actually happened to me a couple of weeks ago. We were doing a live cast, a live stream just like this, and I was in the middle of a brilliant thought, and uh, my internet just cut out. Oh, and, I know. But uh, they've, that was done it. That, they've done that to me a bunch of times, and then I go into, like, like super panic mode because now, now I have to check it myself because I won't waste my time calling them and being like, oh, well, did you unplug it for 30 seconds? I'm like, shut up. One of my best friends <laughs> reverse engineer stuff for them to break so right go, that's the first thing you always do uh, unplug oh, yeah. it plug it back in unplug it plug it back in oh there he is i got i got logged out i don't know what happened guys i'm sorry it's was like, it something it was, we said <laughs> i was too scared there was just too much uh too much scariness going on that's right yeah. once once you had to quit looking at the book and look at me you're like hmm. <laughs> No, no, but uh, it was it was fun actually going through it like that, and just you know, I, I think when you when you're involved with putting it together, sometimes you're not able to kind of take a step back and see just how much great stuff is kind of put into it, like unless you actually take the time to kind of go through like we just did. It's yeah, cool. and there's there's a lot more stuff in the book than is even listed on the Kickstarter page because you yeah. you've only got so much space to work with. And if you want to get the book done, you actually have to stop posting stuff on Kickstarter and get to work. That's right. True, true facts. So everybody, you got you got nine days left, including today. The link is in the chat. Go check it out for yourself. Uh, definitely check out what art tiers is still available so you can get some original art for this book. And of course, we already know my bias leans towards the hardcover. But I'm biased to hardcovers in the first place. But uh, with with that beautiful uh, poster art on that book, it's gorgeous. And this year just seems to be, for some reason, a perfect year for horror. <laughs> right. I, right. I, I, I don't know why, but it is. It fits, it fits right in somehow. It, it, fits, it fits right in. And there's, there's you know, other, other publishers out there. Lots of, I've read lots of indie stuff. Um not not so much anthology books like like this one is but you know other you know individual series and stuff and you know it's just been good all over scout's got some great horror stuff vault's got some cool horror stuff you guys have some fan fantastic horror stuff because you've got uh everybody but uh <laughs> you know rylan grant and uh <laughs> and we'll never let him forget it hey, Ryland, Ryland will make the the cast for the next version of this in, you know, two years. For sure. Speaking of Scout and, and horror, Clay Adams, our own Clay Adams here, has uh, a book called Red Xmas that's out through uh, Scout now. That's right. Coming and out coming out in December, Red Xmas yeah. number one, which is part of their 
Yeah, pre-order it right now. Uh, it's part of their non-stop edition. So you'll get the first issue in December. And then uh, shortly after that, you'll get the, the whole shebang in one big terrifying trade. Yep. Oh, nice. Yeah, we've actually got uh, Jonathan Hendricks who's doing uh, the recount over at Scout. We've got him here tomorrow night. Oh, oh wow. Cool. cool. Very yeah. cool. Scout's putting out a lot of great stuff right now. Oh, yeah. But I want to thank you guys for uh, joining us. I know you've booked all of your podcasts for this week tonight. So <laughs> just one more. Just one more. Just one more. That's right. Thank you very much for having us. We yeah, really thanks. appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate it. We could make it up this time. We had a, we had a mishap with time zones the last time. And that's right on henchmen. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I was jam packing to read all the baby badass that I could get my hands on <laughs> be, before that. Do you do you have it? Do you, did you read them all, or can I send you some still, or what? Did you check them out? There's only four issues, so yeah, I I, I I've got you're the whole trade. Yeah. You're cut you're caught up on your baby badass. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> all right, well, uh, it, it's nice to finally meet you guys. And uh, David, after reading your baby badass, you're a demented fellow. I like you. Uh, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Glad to hear it. So best of luck with this book. It's doing great. Uh, hopefully, you'll get it'll get up to that next tier yeah nine more days come on people we, know we can do it prepared. you can do it you can get it and it's it's at a great price point as well for all the pages that david doesn't want to hear about that are in this book <laughs> there's, there's, there's That's too much right. it's price to move baby thanks get it, Will. get it well you can guys thanks a lot uh good luck and we will hopefully talk to you again real soon appreciate it take care thank you very much yeah